Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Chicago Deep Dish Pizza. Now, Chicago is one of my favorite cities to visit. There's a number of reasons why, but one of the big ones is the food. And one of the foods that Chicago is known for is its pizza. Now there's a couple different really popular styles of Chicago pizza. There's that thin crust that's the tavern or bar style. And stay tuned because we're going to get to that one real soon. And then there's the iconic Chicago deep dish. Now this is a truly unique pizza from the crust itself to the fact that it's cooked in a high sided pan. And then the toppings seem to be put on upside down. We're going to get to all of that today. And I want to show you guys how you can make this at home so you don't have to make a trip to Chicago every time you want a deep dish. We're gonna start by making the dough. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bloom some yeast and some hot water, well, about 110 degree water. I need 250 grams of water. Then I'm gonna add seven grams of dry yeast. And to help get that yeast going, we're also gonna add about seven grams of sugar. So this now just needs to sit room temperature a little warmer uh, until it kind of becomes foamy and then we'll be ready to mix. Now one of the unique things about this deep dish dough is not only does it have flour in it but also some cornmeal. Uh, this is a brand new product that we just got in uh, at atbbq.com. Marsh Hen Mill and they, they mill a whole bunch of cool stuff. The yeast is looking good so we're going to put this all together and we're putting our dough together in the food processor today. It comes together really quick this is a very tender pizza dough, um, so we're using an all-purpose flour versus like a double-lot flour with a higher protein because we don't need it to be stretchy, we need it to be tender. So we've got 400 grams of all-purpose flour and then 100 grams of our corn meal, 7 grams of kosher salt, and I'll have all of the measurements uh, in volume as well, it's just not quite as efficient, uh, not quite as accurate I guess I should say, so that's why I'm, I'm shouting out the weights. We're doing 75 grams each of butter and olive oil because I want that buttery flaky crust and I also want that EVOO flavor. All right, so we'll get all that stuff rocking first and then we'll pour in the liquid. As soon as that balls up and starts rocking around like that, I might give it 10 times around. So when I start to see it kind of breaking apart at the bottom, I know that we're getting close to overworking it uh, and we need to stop. I only let it rock around about 10 times. This is a very soft dough. It doesn't need much more work. We're just gonna knead it to make sure everything comes together nicely. Should look fairly smooth on the surface, but just kind of kneading that into a ball. And then we're gonna throw it into an oil-coated container to double in size. Moving on to our sauce now. I'm gonna start with a full can of San Marzano tomatoes. And we're gonna make a chunky kind of sweet pizza sauce. Since I want it to be chunky, I'm just gonna break up these whole tomatoes by hand. And then we are gonna cook this sauce down to let this tomato kind of caramelize, reduce, and thicken up. Only a little bit of knife work we need to do today is mincing up a couple cloves of garlic. smash this down and mince it up. It's okay if it's a little rustic. It is gonna cook for a while. Probably got about a tablespoon there. I'm gonna put down about two tablespoons of olive oil. And throw all of our garlic in there. I'll let that get started just a little bit. We're also going to be using some Cattleman's Grill Italiano seasoning, about a tablespoon. And I'm going to throw that down in the oil 
right now with the garlic, just so we can start to toast those spices in there. We'll wake up all those aromas. And it happens quick. It's already very aromatic. Let's go ahead and throw in our San Marzano's. Also a little bit of a sweeter sauce. So we're adding a couple of tablespoons of sugar. And then if this needs salt, we'll decide that once it's reduced down, that way we don't automatically make it too salty. But for now, we're just gonna let this simmer away. Sauce has been simmering for about 20 minutes now. Um, what I'm kind of looking for is if I draw my spoon through here, it doesn't just automatically fill back in. Um, and that's, that's about the consistency I want. If I was gonna measure this, it should be down to about two cups now. Now I want this to cool down so it's not cooking the dough as soon as it goes on top. So I'm gonna spread it out on a pan and throw it in the fridge until it's cool. So we've got that doubling now. We're gonna turn this out and divide it into two separate dough balls for two separate pizzas. And I like to be accurate on this just for myself. 921. So we're looking at 460 each. A little short. You're basically just gonna form that into a ball and then we're gonna put it onto an oiled sheet pan. We're gonna cover this and throw it into the fridge to rest for at least 30 minutes before we roll it out. I've got some dough balls that I made earlier this morning so they'd be ready. And this one is coming fresh out of the fridge so it's firm. We're gonna roll this out with a rolling pin to about 12 or 13 inches if we can. We're cooking in a 10 inch pan. And of course one of the defining features of the deep dish is that crust that goes all the way up the sides to hold all the filling or toppings, I should say. See, I got it, I'm thinking about it like a pie, not a pizza. It's gonna give us some great texture in the end. So this is our pan we're using. We're definitely wide enough for the pan, but probably could go a little bit wider to come up the sides just a little bit further. So before we get this in here, we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in here. Um, I like to be pretty generous with it. So we can almost get like a fried effect. Just gonna lay this right over the top. There we go. I'm gonna wanna shrink up a little bit. I got that size just right, I think. So not super thick as far as uh, how, how thick the actual dough is. We're not trying to make bread. I still want it to be a pizza crust. So now we're ready to build. And the first thing that goes down on your deep dish is your cheese. Like I said, it's almost like it's upside down. We're gonna do our cheese, then our toppings, and then our sauce on top. We're using sliced mozzarella here. If you can get the full fat stuff, that's awesome. Um, it's harder to come by than the part skim. So part skim is what we're using. And we're using about six ounces of it. So next we've got our toppings. And today the only topping we're doing is hot Italian sausage. And here's another kind of unique thing. It goes in raw. So this is actually gonna cook under the sauce. And as that happens, this is gonna render out the fat in our sausage, which is then gonna kind of leak into your cheese and it all gets to know each, each other real well, real, real well. So I'm gonna put down about eight ounces of our hot Italian sausage. All right, so last little bit of that going on and we are ready for our sauce. So this is cooled down. Like I said, it yields about two cups. We're gonna use one cup in this one pie. And look, don't come at me for not putting enough sauce on here because I'm not trying to make a soup bowl. I'm just trying to cover that top. I want to be able to see this cheese peek through when it's done. Might not be the most traditional. 
but it's really nice visually. And then finally, I'm just gonna dust this with a little bit of our white pizza mojo. There's Parmesan in here, there's some herbs. It's a big pop of flavor. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 425 degrees with the wood fired oven attachment installed. We're gonna slide that in, close her up. We'll come back and check on it in about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes in, let's just get a little update, take a look. Crust is starting to set. We're starting to get a little browning. Obviously we got some, some time to go. I expect it to take about 25 minutes total, 25, 30. Um, so we'll slide this back in. And while we're talking about time, I'll mention that you absolutely can cook this without the wood-fired oven attachment. And, you know, 640 alone, your gas grill, your oven at home. Uh, the only difference is not going to get quite the same browning on top or on the bottom for that matter, being that it's sitting on a stone. Um, and then the time's going to be longer. So just keep in mind that with a different setup, you might want to bump the temp up to about 450 and expect it to take longer. All right, we are just shy of 30 minutes on this cook. Everything's looking good, all melty. We've got nice browning on top. Uh, one thing I will do is find a piece of sausage, just make sure it's over 165, and it is. So this is ready to come off. All right, giving it just a few minutes to cool off. We're ready to slice into it and get a taste. Looks pretty dang good. All right, so it looks really good. It holds up under its own weight, but it's not burnt. It's a nice golden brown on the bottom. That cheese is oozing. Let's do this. Mm. The herbs and spices in that sauce, combined with the Italian sausage, is just like a match made in heaven. This crust, it's light, it's flaky, it's unlike most, and it's nicely almost fried just a little from the oil in the skillet. And then good old cheesy mozzarella. Lots of stretch. Mm. I'm pretty dang happy about this one. I don't know how close it comes to every Chicago pizzeria that you've ever eaten in, but it's definitely worth trying at home. Top it all off with a little parm and you're good to go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.